In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can push blocks or crits. And I put a quick example together here. We've got this little guy here pushing crits. He has to push a stack of two across to get the third one. And with the third one in place, he can then jump up to reach that top heart. So the idea being you can put together a quick little game nice and easily. So let's head on over to Godot here. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new project. My project, let's call this push create example. I'll create a new folder for that and create and edit. So I'm going to switch across to 2D here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit here to probably 100%. And hopefully you can see that clearly on the screen. So that's my little play area here. And I'm going to create a new 2D scene. Double click, I'm going to rename this as world. The first thing I'm going to take care of is my player. So I'm going to add a child node. It's going to be a character body 2D and double click and we'll rename this as player. With the player selected, I'm going to click on and add a sprite 2D. And then with the player selected again, click to add a collision ship 2D. With the sprite collected, I'm just gonna use the default Godot icon here and pull that across into the texture area. And then with the collision ship selected, select and add a rectangle ship. And we'll just resize that. Hold down my option key here, just to resize that to approximately the size of the sprite. With the player selected, I like to group these. I'm going to group those three things, those three nodes together, and then just move that into the play area. The next thing I'm going to take care of is the ground of the floor. So with the world selected, add a new child node. I'm going to add a static body 2D. With the static body 2D selected, let's double click. We'll call this ground. And then we're going to add a, let's add a color rectangle for the ground. So color rect. And with the color rect selected, we go across, we can change the color. Let's select uh, probably a, a greenish sort of color here. There we go. I'll just resize that to approximately the width of my play area. And with the ground selected, add a new node, which will be a collision ship 2D. And with collision ship selected over here to the ship, we'll just select a new world boundary. So there we have the three nodes here, ground, color right, and collision ship. And again, I'm going to group those. And then just move those down to the bottom area down here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to take care of is the crate or the box. So with the world selected, I'm going to add a new child node. This one's going to be a rigid body 2D. We're going to double click. and We'll call this crate or block, whatever you want to call it. And then with crate selected, I'm going to add a child node, which is going to be a color rect. With the color rect selected, I'm going to change the color maybe to some sort of red or pinkish sort of color. Okay, there we go. With the crate selected, I'm going to add a collision ship 2D. And then over here, I'm going to select the ship as a rectangle ship. And let's just resize that to approximately the size of that crate. You can zoom in if you need to. There we go. Now with that, those three nodes selected with the crate, the color rect and the collision ship there, I'm going to group those. Just zoom out a little bit here. And then what I can do, I can grab that and let's just move that over to here. Now, if I was to play this, nothing would happen to the player, but the block should fall and hit the ground. So let's go across and we'll hit on play. Do we want to select the current scene? Yes, we do. We'll save it as world and save. And there's the block falling to the ground. As I said, the player won't move. We haven't got a script on that yet. Okay, let's take care of this crit. We haven't quite finished with this. What I want to do with the crit is go into nodes over here and select, click on groups. I'm going to place this in a group called crits. And then with the player selected, I'm going to add a new script. I'm going to accept all the defaults here and create. I'm not going to touch any of these. I'll leave it all as the default. And then just down here before the moving slide, I'm going to add some code into here. 
The first thing I want to do is to see if the player is colliding with anything. And I'm going to check those collisions. So it is going to collide with the ground. And when we go across to the crate or the block, it is going to collide with the block as well. So I'm going to loop through those collisions. So for I in, then we want to get the slide collisions. So cl slide collision count, because there could be more than one. A colon. Then tab down to new line. Let me just move down a little bit here, makes it a bit clearer. I'm going to set up a variable here. So a variable is going to be collision. And that's going to be equal to get underscore slide collision. And then I in here. So what we're doing was looping through all of the collisions. How many collisions do we have? And then for each of these, we're going to assign it to this collision variable here. Next thing I want to do then is create another variable, which is going to be my collision block or collision create. Let's do create because that's what we've been using. And that's equal to the collision dot. And we want to get collider. Okay, next line here. The thing I want to do now is to check this collision block. And I want to check what type of collision create or block it is. So I could be colliding with the floor. I could be colliding with other elements in my game. I just want to check when it's colliding with a create or block. And the way we've done that, we've got the create here. And we did place it into a group called creates. So we can check if it's actually in that group. Back to my player script here. Okay, so what I want to do here is if this collision block or collision crate dot is in and we want group. So if it's in a group and what group do you want to check? You want to check the crates block or crates group, I should say. And the next thing I want to check is the velocity of this crate. So in other words, if I'm pushing this crate and I'm pushing it beyond a certain limit, I don't want to push it any faster. I want to limit the speed at which this thing is, is being pushed. So I will need to have a maximum velocity. I'll also need a push force as well. So let me go up to the very start up here and we'll create a couple of variables here. So the first one is variable, actually these would be constants. So let's just add some more constants here. So constant, so the first one will be push force. And let's set that to say a hundred. Now the second constant I'm going to have here is the maximum velocity at which this crate can be pushed. So let's have max velocity. And we'll set that to say 150. We can adjust these afterwards. Let's go back down to here then. So if this collision crate is in the group crates, and what I want to do then is check for the linear velocity in the x direction. Now this linear velocity, if it's traveling left, it will have a negative velocity. And if it's traveling right, it will have a positive velocity. So what I want to do is take the absolute value of that. So the absolute value means if it's negative, it's just going to turn it into a positive value. So we want the collision underscore uh, crit and then dot get linear velocity. But I want the X component of that. Now, if that is less than my maximum velocity, then I want to do something. What do I want to do here? Well, what I want to do is apply a, an impulse, a force onto that block. So I'm going to take my collision block or my collision cred. I'm then going to dot apply a central impulse. And this central impulse will take a value. So it's going to be the collision dot get underscore normal. 
and I'm going to multiply that by my negative push force. So I'll explain what's going on here. So we're taking that collision crit, we're applying a central impulse, so applying a force to this crit. And what we're doing here is we're getting the normal. So if you can imagine we've got a crit, we've got a flat surface, the normal is coming out perpendicular to that surface. So if I'm pushing a crit to the right, the normal is coming perpendicular to me in the opposite direction. So what I want to do is multiply then by the negative push force. The normal is coming out towards me, it's coming in the opposite direction, so I'm going to buy, multiply by the negative push force. So let's go ahead and play that. So the player is hitting the ground, we can go along, we can push the block, let's jump to the other side, and we can push from that side as well. Now that crit is rolling. If you want to stop that, what we can do in a crit here is go to the inspector, and then under deactivation here, we can lock the rotation. Let me play that again. I can push the block, jump over, and push, and it, this time it will not roll over. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Quick thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And the other thing is this little game here that I was playing, the character, the crates, the background elements, you can download those from my website at coding.academy and I'll leave a link in the description.